So let's just quickly run through some misconceptions, uh, misconceptions about dengue hemorrhagic fever. Okay. Dengue, dengue hemorrhagic fever kills only by hemorrhage. Okay. So that's not actually true. Patients usually die as a result. Obviously, if they have uncontrolled hemorrhage, if you don't treat them with adequate fluids and blood support, they may die. But they usually die because of shock. But shock is something... Uh, sometimes it's a refractory shock, even to fluid resuscitation, dinotropes, it may not respond. Hemorrhage, we are able to probably uh, control in many patients by giving them adequate blood product, blood component transfusions. Poor management, another misconception is poor management uh, of dengue turns into dengue hemorrhagic fever. Because what happens is many times patients get admitted with two, three days of fever, that time the patient is relatively stable. They have fever, they're feeling unwell, but actually they get, a, they get hospitalized during that period. After two, three days, the fever comes down. Many patients improve, but some patients actually start worsening around that, you know, after the febrile phase, they enter a critical phase. They start having bleeding manifestations, drop in platelets, the blood pressure may start going down. So the patient's relatives then start questioning you that we have hospitalized when he was well and now he is worsening. That means your management is poor. That's why he is becoming sick. But that's actually uh, not true because if you don't manage them well, of course, they will not do well. But dengue hemorrhagic fever or a shock syndrome is a distinct, con distinct condition and that can happen in well-treated patients also. So this you need to tell your patients in the beginning itself. So any, any patient gets admitted with two, three days of fever. In the beginning itself, we talk to them about natural history of fever. That, you know, many patients, you know, dengue is a viral infection. It's only supportive treatment. Initially, it's going to be uh, just going to paracetamol and ensuring the patient is well hydrated. Some people, the fever comes on in two, three days. For some people, it may persist for six, seven days, despite what we do. And then we don't give NSAIDs. Okay, even if the fever is very high, we just give them paracetamol. Okay, and then despite what we do, some patients may worsen. We tell our patient relatives, beforehand that this is the natural history of dengue, then they understand, otherwise they will question you that, you know, we have hospitalized, despite hospitalization because of your poor management, my son or daughter is worsening. So that's why we tell them that they can worsen irrespective of what you do. Okay. So some people uh, used to use tonic tests for dengue to diagnose dengue hemorrhagic fever, but I told you that dengue uh, tonic test is neither sensitive nor specific uh, for dengue, for diagnosing dengue, it is a non-specific indicator of capillary fragility. Even elderly people may have tonic it is positive. So, th thrombocytopenia means it is severe infection. That is not true. Actually, if you look at severe features of WHO criteria for diagnosing severe dengue, thrombocytopenia actually is not a criteria. Of course, somebody with coagulopathy, bleeding manifestation, severe thrombocytopenia, that is different having over to bleeding. But just thrombocytopenia 70, 80,000, that's not an indica uh, indicator for severity or criteria for severe illness. So thrombocyte dropping platelet count is only a warning sign, but not among WHO severity criteria. Antibiotics are useful. So it's only supportive treatment. Okay, uh, there are no antibiotics. Antibiotics are not useful in dengue infection. There was one small trial on doxycycline, but Antibiotics are not effective in dengue infection. Steroids, some people use steroids for dengue infection because steroids may improve the platelet count faster, but overall outcomes will not be different. So again, there is no evidence to suggest that steroids are useful in preventing mortality. There is this drug called caripil or the papaya leaf extract. Few years back, it was like considered wonder drug. Actually, there is not enough evidence to say that it is actually useful. Many patients, despite we ask them, don't use, don't give papaya leaf extract because most patients, this papaya leaf extract is very bitter and then kind of it's an irritant to the stomach. They tend to warm it after taking this leaf extract. It comes in a tablet form also. And uh, patients with dengue already have a lot of gastric irritation. So that's why we don't want to give any other drug which can worsen that. And this papaya leaf extract has been, there were some small studies to say that platelet, platelet counts improve faster, but there is no evidence, uh, there are no large scale studies and there's no evidence to say that it prevents mortality or organ dysfunction. Okay, so it is again, not a great drug. So it is finally boils down to just supportive treatment. Uh, 